Welcome everyone. I'm Matt. I'm the platform manager for Moodle LMS. I've been with Moodle for almost a year now, uh, but this is definitely not my first Moodle Moot, although for those who do know me, uh, I've stood up on stage many times at Moodle Moots wearing a different logo on my t-shirt. Uh, and my Moodle journey started probably in about, about uh, 2010 when the university that I was working with at the time moved from uh, WebCT to the newly released, at the time, Moodle 2.0. And my job then was as an educational technologist, uh, helping academics move their learning uh, into the online space and all of the challenges that that entailed. I then uh, moved on to a major Australian healthcare provider where I helped them roll out a Moodle system and then use it for the teaching and upskilling of their, uh, of their staff. <laughs> Sorry, you point a camera, camera at me, I'll smile. Uh, and then I spent about uh, the best part of a decade working with a Moodle partner where I worked with organisations of basically every type who are all at various stages of their Moodle journey. Uh, and really just sort of helping them solve their problems and get the most out of uh, Moodle LMS. And after all that time, this year I'm up on stage at a Moodle Moot in a Moodle t-shirt and I'm very, very excited about it. It's, it's awesome. So where does my role as platform manager fit into the whole thing? Here's my slide thingy. There it is. So. Um, it, You've probably seen this before if you're in Brett's talk. So this is a bit of a high-level diagram of the relationship between the various products and services at uh, Moodle and uh, with, with LMS sitting right in the middle of it. And LMS is actually managed across two different teams. There's my team, which is the platform team, and we look after the core of uh, Moodle LMS. So things like all the core subsystems, user management, administration, uh, APIs, security, all of that sort of thing. And then wrapped around the Moodle platform, like a big hug, is the educational solutions team. And they're led by Brett Dalton, who you would have seen if you went to his earlier talk on open standards. And the educational solutions team look after all of the educational components of Moodle, so things like all of the courses and activities. Now, Brett and I work really closely together, and there is some overlap in what we do, but I'm the one lucky enough to be on stage today talking about uh, what's coming in 4.3. So just let's get on to that. Enough about me. So Moodle 4.3 is going to be released on the 9th of October. It's not very far away now. Uh, it's going to have over 260 new features and improvements. And if I was to spend about the next 25 minutes uh, talking about each of those, I'd have about six seconds per thing. Now, I did kind of consider trying to do that. I know I talk fast, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to focus on uh, some of the new things. And I'm also going to spend some time at the end uh, giving a small look at the things that we've got in uh, development now that's going to be in uh, Moodle 4.4. So let's start at the main course view as a student. Uh, in 4.3, we've worked on the presentation of the activity cards. Uh, they take up less vertical space, which means less vertical scroll. Uh, however, we didn't want to limit the display of important criteria and information to students. So we've changed the way that we display our completion and availability requirements for each activity. Uh, the completion requirements are now in a dropdown. Uh, which just really helps reduce that visual load in activities that have got a lot of things that you have to do before they're complete, but you still get that overall clear completion of when they're done. Uh, we've made a similar change to the availability criteria, so you can expand out a box and uh, see all the criteria that's required. Uh, and with the, the new layout, actually, as you work through and uh, complete an activity, as we're seeing now uh, that box will actually just update and only show you what you need to focus on next. Again, just trying to you know, help students focus and reduce that, uh, that cognitive load that they have. Looking at the activity cards now as a teacher, uh, we've made some, improvement, some good improvements here too. A lot of the common actions uh, for activities uh, are now more easily accessible directly from in the context of where they're displayed. So also into addition of where they've always been. So things like you can now update activi activity completion directly from the drop-down that displays the activity completion for that activity. And when you do edit them, you're only actually presented with the criteria, the, the settings that you're trying to change. No more scrolling through that entire activity page just to get to completion. 
Uh, in a similar fashion, you can update uh, the group status uh, directly from the activity card itself. And in fact, Moodle 4.3 introduces some new UI elements uh, that sort of make that easier, and you'll start to see that rolled out. This video is not entirely in sync with what I'm talking about. It'll loop. You'll get it. Um, and just like the completion, uh, the availability settings can be updated from where they are. And again, with availability, you only get the settings that you're trying to change. Uh, and finally, you can also set the visibility for the activity from the context menu. Uh, and as a bonus, and the same as what you've seen with the other ones, if you've already got visibility set, uh, you can update it from where it's being displayed. Uh, and these changes, I think, are really going to just save a lot of time just going through those very common course management tools. And I actually think it's probably my favourite set of functionality in 4.3. If I'm allowed to have a favourite, I probably shouldn't say that. Um, still on the course side of things, uh, but moving more towards activities, we've made some improvements in 4.3 to the way the LTI tools are set up and used. And if you saw Brett's talk a bit earlier, you would have seen some of this. So just to go through these in a little bit more detail, uh, there's a dedicated page to set up LTI external tools now. And on this page, you can see what ones you've got set up for your course. You can see uh, how many instances are used in your course. You've got easy access to edit and delete them, as well as add new ones. And the way that you create tools for a course has been simplified. It's just easier to do now. And once they have been set up, they're actually also easier to use in your course. Um, in the activity chooser, which displays all your act activities, as you're aware, the configured LTI tools now display as first-class activities in there. So you can actually find the LTI tools that you've got set up in your course. Uh, and also, though, if you're a teacher and you don't want all of those LTI tools in there, there's only you've set up a few, but there's some you don't want to use anymore or just don't want as easy access to, you can just, as a teacher, in your course, select which ones you want to see and don't. Uh, one of the things that's actually not in the video but is uh, very cool, if you're an administrator who's got uh, LTI tools set up at a course level, you can now restrict their display by category. So in the case where you've got a maths faculty that's got a certain set of LTI tools, an English faculty that's got another set of LTI tools, they don't have to see each other's. It's just, once again, just reducing that uh, load on the teachers and making the slides there a bit easier. Um, starting... Step forward into the mic, sorry. Can't stand still. Um, zooming out a bit now, uh, 4.3 uh, brings some good improvements to the activity completion. So at uh, site level, administrators can now set default activity completions for their activities using the site. So this is this case of where your organisation, for example, wants to have a completion criteria for uh, assignment that says students must get a grade before that thing's uh, before assignments are considered complete as an organisation. Teachers now no longer have to go in and remember to do that every time they set up an assignment. It just gets inherited. Um, and once again, it'll just save us so much time. Uh, we've also taken this new site admin page uh, pattern and applied it to the course. So if you want to manage uh, activity completion uh, defaults at a course level, you get the nice new improved page. Uh, You'll see in, in this video and in a couple of the other ones, the completion settings themselves are also improved. They now have a bit more of a progressive disclosure pattern to them. So the settings are only shown to you as, the, as they're needed, and they're only the relevant ones. The irrelevant ones are hidden. And this was actually an MUA-sponsored uh, contribution, so I do thank them for helping make this possible. On the uh, topic of tracking student process uh, progress, I should say, uh, we've made some good changes to the gradebook. Uh, firstly, looking at the gradebook setup, uh, you can uh, there's an improved user interface. You can add gradebook categories and items directly from a uh, drop-down menu. And when adding them, the settings are simplified, and they're also displayed in a modal window. Uh, and so you're not taken away from the context that you're working in. It's everything's done in front of you. Uh, there's some other changes. We've improved user search behaviour, so you can even more easily find your students when you're working in the gradebook. Uh, we've made it easier to um, improve, or we've improved, I should say, the bulk movement, so you can move the grade settings around a bit more easier. Uh, and also in this video, there is a uh, sticky footer at the bottom of the page, and that just displays common actions for the reports that you're in. It's always at the bottom of the page. You don't have to try and scroll to find it. 
Uh, and look, there's actually been quite a lot of improvements to the gradebook over the last couple of versions of LMS. I've just given a little bit of a tease of what's in 4.3. But if you're interested in a more in-depth look, uh, I recommend you go to Barbara's presentation, which is on at 2.30 p.m. on Thursday in this room, I believe. I'm getting the nod. So yeah, I do invite you to attend that and uh, get to see some more gradebook improvements in depth. So I feel like I've gone through so much already, and it's only so little. Um, what we've seen so far is broadly relates to like optimising outcomes for both students and teachers. So where these changes for both groups you know, will help them manage their workloads and optimise their time. And look, what we've gone through isn't even everything in that area, but I am going to spend some time uh, looking at some things that are not just limited to courses and activities. Now, security, it's not the most attractive thing in an application, but it's so important. And we've always taken uh, security very uh, seriously in LMS, but for 4.3, we wanted to do more and just have that dedicated push to sort of get where we need to be, or beyond where we need to be, in fact. And this slide's just got a few of the security improvements. They're pretty nerdy, but if you're into that sort of stuff, they're pretty cool. Um, I'm a nerd, I can say that. Um, and look, they sort of just basically cover how we manage uh, passwords more, secure, uh, more securely, uh, how data is secured as it moves around the various parts of your Moodle infrastructure, uh, and a, a couple of examples of how we've also improved the Moodle user interface to enforce additional security patterns and just trying to you know, do things like not show keys more than once and things like that. Um, and look, this is really with the aim of making Moodle LMS the most secure LMS application available, and this is something that we're going to keep pushing beyond 4.3. There was a couple of things I did want to specifically mention about uh, security and privacy in 4.3. The first one is around uh, data sharing when using the YouTube and the Vimeo media players. So both these players now have an admin option to reduce user tracking. So uh, for Vimeo, it implements their do not track option, and when you've got that enabled, it basically sends only the data that it needs to Vimeo to actually play the video. For YouTube, it uh, reduces tracking using their YouTube nocookie.com domain, um, and the, it still uses some cookies because it's YouTube, but they're not, uh, they're not initialized on on render of the video anymore, they actually only get initialised when you click play. So if you wanted to have something to say, if you consent, click play, you can do that. Uh, and there's actually a bonus with this feature for YouTube is because it doesn't initialise all that until you click play, there's less web calls when you're loading pages with YouTube uh, embedded. Uh, another specific piece I wanted to talk about is multi-factor authentication, and it actually has come up in a couple of the talks that we've seen already. Uh, 4.3 will ship with native multi-factor authentication. Uh, it'll work with any authentication method you're already using. It's not a replacement authentication method. It's a, an extra feature. Uh, it works with some of the common factors that you'd be familiar with, like the Authenticator app on your phone, uh, hardware tokens, which are really cool, uh, your uh, email and a few others. Uh, this was a joint effort with one of our uh, partners. They had a battle-tested plugin that they'd been using in some high security environments for quite a while. We've brought that into core, we've contributed some uh, UX improvements and some other user workflow improvements and made it available to everybody. And we'll actually continue to work on that a bit more in 4.4. I won't show too much of this, but if you're interested in more about uh, MFA and, or, and authentication security in general, I recommend you see uh, Peter Burnett's talk in this room. I think he's the one after the one after mine. And uh, Alexander Bias's presentation, uh, which is at 4.15 today in the Trezzy Point room. So something slightly lighter than security. So over the last few versions of LMS, we've been improving our integration with the tiny MCE HTML editor, uh, because we're actually sort of moving towards retiring our own homegrown Addo editor. Uh, tiny became the default uh, editor in new installs in 4.2, uh, and we've continued to improve it in 4.3. And one of those improvements is actually several improvements is one uh, in one, I should say. Uh, we've made our use of Tiny compatible with the Tiny MCE Premium plugins. So some of these are getting very quickly demoed in the video. They're like their advanced image editing and PDF export plugins. They've got a bunch of content edit plugins like uh, advanced tables, checklist, footnotes, format painter, plus a bunch that I didn't get time to put on the slide. Um, and 
The cool thing about this, and to make it a lot easier for admins, you don't need to install additional Moodle plugins to get this to work. You just need a tiny API key and click enable. The premium plugins will be downloaded directly from Tiny and available in your Moodle instantly. Um, moving on. Uh, we've also made some improvements to the core of Tiny. Uh, and just a couple of those are that we now have uh, a nice source code editor for when you want to work with your uh, your markup directly. As you can see, you get the nicely uh, formatted code, you get your code colors. The editor itself also does like tag suggestion and tag auto completion and, and tag closing as well, just so to make it easier when you're working with it like that. Uh, we've included the no link plugin just in case you want to have URLs in your content and don't want Moodle to turn them into links for various reasons. We've added the full screen button to the nav bar just to make it easier working in, in that mode plus more stuff that's coming in 4.3. Um, and all of these things are really in that space around unlocking creativity and helping you just uh, build better learning content in your Moodle. Right, so not only do I not have enough time to go through all of the new things, I don't even have enough time to go through all of the major things in 4.3, but there is a few things that I did want to quickly mention. Uh, 4.3 will introduce a new communication API and a new plugin type, and these are aimed at making it easier to integrate LMS with uh, external communication uh, providers. And in 4.3, we'll include the functionality to connect your Moodle course to a matrix instance, um, which is quite cool. The, we've improved the MoodleNet uh, functionality, so in 4.2, you could share single activities. In 4.3, you'll be able to share whole or partial courses. Um, We've uh, added, there's improved functionality in the question bank uh, to assist with discovery and filtering of questions. Uh, and I actually, the question bank work and is and quiz works on ongoing and there'll be more, there's more of it in 4.3 that I won't mention, there's some coming in 4.4. I will make a special call out, if you're interested in uh, that space in Moodle and improving that space, please come and see Tim Hunt who you probably have all seen before, and Luca Bosch. They're the kind of people who want to ask. They, they are the people to talk to and are really keen to hear your questions. Um, we're continuing to build out Report Builder. There's more functionality and more reports in that. Uh, and there's some course navigation improvements, including better navigation when using the, the book activity. And there was actually a sneak peek in one of the other videos, if you saw those little floating um, arrows and that you actually would have seen if you used Moodle Academy. And part of the reason I sort of chose to call out these particular features is they did make it easier to share and communicate when using Moodle, uh, which is important when you really want to facilitate that collaboration with your different users. Um, look, there are, there's more stuff coming in 4.3. There will be some more detail about all of these features plus more in the next few days as we get closer to the release and start to send out some of those release communications. But before I start to wrap up, I did want to spend a bit of time giving a glimpse of some of the stuff that we're working on now that's aiming to be in 4.4. Because guess what? The 24th of April next year is not far away, and um, just like the speed that I'm talking, we are not going to be slowing down. So just a few things I want to touch on. Uh, we're introducing an improved UI and better workflows when adding images and media when working with our text editors, and this is just a couple of the the slides of what that'll look like. It's just going to be less clicks when doing those really common actions of um, adding media and images to your course. Uh, and it's actually part of a larger project to improve the file picker and repository functionality in LMS overall. We've been working on further improvements to the course layout and how you can manage activity hierarchy on the course page. Now, I do really need to point out that these are preliminary designs that haven't been finalized while they're in black and, black and white. Um, but in the concept you can see here, you've got the ability to add subsections to your course. So in the image on the right, you can see week two's got two subsections, one for the week's quizzes and one for the week's readings. Um, and I do want to make another call out. If you are in wanting to get involved in shaping this functionality, uh, Sabi, who I'm not sure is in this room today, um, but Sabi and the UX team are running some usability testing sessions across the next couple of days right here at the Moot. Um, so if you want to get involved in that, head over to the Moodle stand and they'll be able to give you a bit more information on how to get in contact with the team. Um, we've, got some uh, we've got some improvements landing around uh, how you select and manage your themes in the LMS, just to make it easier to see where you, the context of various themes are getting used, as well as some reporting behind that as well. 
Uh, look, apart from being a cool improvement, I just wanted to call this one out just to sort of show that we're working across all areas of LMS to improve things for all of the user types. Big list of some other stuff that we're working on. Uh, Tiny and MCA native plugins. So they've Tiny have got a community of plugins uh, just like we do at Moodle. So we want a generic way just to add them from the Moodle uh, admin interface. Once again, no need to install any Moodle plugins. As Brett was talking about, there's more LTI improvements on the way, so more changes around making it easier to set up and manage LTI tools, more places you can LT use LTI tools, as well, as long as, as in addition to the ability just to integrate with more different types of LTI tools. Uh, we've recently completed a large piece of research around uh, notifications with sort of the aim of, you know, getting that right information to the right people at the right time. Uh, and the first parts of that functionality is going to start landing in 4.4. Some improvements around the task API, so the way that Moodle runs and manages its tasks. Uh, and we're going to be starting to some user research around the admin menus and making lives easier for our admin. Um, so there'll be look out for some ways of getting involved in that. Plus more still, so much more stuff. Um, and look, today I've really just sort of covered what's happening in the very short term in uh, LMS. We've seen some of the stuff that's coming in 4.3 on the 9th uh, of next month. There's a very quick look at some of the stuff happening in 4.4. But look, that's really just the start. So I do invite everyone to come and see Marie's talk at uh, 4.30 this afternoon in this room. She's doing the, the last keynote for today and she'll talk about our larger product vision. And look, finally, while I'm up here on stage, I would like to say a big thank you to everybody who's contributed to the 4.3 release. Uh, specifically, everyone from the Moodle community, so everyone who contributed in various ways from lodging issues in our tracker, taking part in all that user research, uh, helping with testing, and indeed to all of our community of developers. Uh, thank you to all of our partners who support so many of you with your Moodle instances. Thank you to my team and the other LMS teams. They do so much of the work every release. And finally, thank you to everyone for coming today. Thank you. All right. Just before we get started with the next session, uh, we've still got some time for questions for Matt. If anyone's got a burning question. Yep, we've got one over there. Barbara, please. Oh, we've got multiple. While the, sorry, while the mic runners are doing Hi. their thing, um, <laughs> just to let everyone know, I'm around at the moot all week. I'm on the, the stand for a couple of hours on the schedule somewhere, uh, and I'm not hard to miss. So if you've got any questions you don't get to, just come up and talk to me. But we'll go. Is Bootstrap 5 coming to Moodle anytime soon? Oh, just or is it already there? Please. So the, the short answer is yes, there's already a tracker and the team are doing uh, preliminary work on it. I don't have the exact sort of one that we're aiming for off the top of my head, but yes. Okay, thank you. I will say, Tim, um, I understand why from a business point of view it's very helpful to have paid integration partners. Is there ever a danger of conflict? So, for example, Tiny MCE's business revolves around cer selling certain premium plugins. What if we think, in our open source way, we want that feature as part of standard Moodle? Can we just? Is there any kind of impediment to just implementing that as a Moodle feature and releasing it freely? So, to answer your question directly, um, not maybe, as I maybe easier to ask in the abstract, not a specific example. Yeah, no. So, it, it's always a, like it's a good. It is a very, very good question, um, and I'll, I'll sort of get to the answer of it as well. I won't just talk around it. But one of the things that I did want to mention because it talks to a lot of the stuff that we're doing in this space is we, you know, we have to decide. We've got limited resources, and also some of these things. I'll take the matrix integration for example. Matrix is a massive company, big group of people, a lot of developers. Building a chat platform is lots and lots of work, right? More And building a good one, let's say, right? Not just a one. So where things, in the case of that, we don't, like, we don't want to start building one. We don't have the resources to do it. It'll be crap because we don't have the resources to do it. There's already a good one, so why are we integrate? Tiny is the same thing. There are, um, you know, commercial things around that, but there is sort of, and I don't want to speak to a contract that I'm not 100% across, but uh, in, in terms of the ins and outs, but there's no really reason for like uh, for, for thing. And one of the uh, exact examples of that is the 
the code plugin, the code styling plugin, they've got a premium one of those. We've got one in core.